come with me and you'll be in a world of your imagination. Take a look and you'll see into your imagination. We'll begin with a spin, traveling in the world of my creation. What we'll see will defy explanation. If you want to view paradise, just simply look around and view it. Anything you want, you can do it. You want to change the world, there's nothing to it. There is no life I know to compare with pure imagination. Living there, you'll be free if you truly wish to be. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. My name is Suzanne Ness, and I am a coach, a speaker, an entertainer, a business owner, a messenger of wonder. I help people align their goals and values to create more of what they want in their lives and ultimately in the world. I do that through individual coaching, through speaking like this, through workshops and trainings, all designed to help you live a more powerful life. I also do products online designed to help you set goals and keep them. So together I create a way for you to tap into the things that are most important to you and make them your reality. Facebook. I'm watching social media. I'm watching the immediacy of information. You are always presenting you, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're in an email, whether you're here in this room, you're on a telephone call with 100 other people from all over the world. As we become independent agents and entrepreneurs, I see this next big wave coming of people that are stepping into their own employment. It's even more crucial. Job interviews, you know? it's. How much of job interviewing tips are based on how you look and mm -hmm. how you talk and the tone of your voice? I mean, it's very much a part of our society. So how do you create and deliver engaging presentations? Now, I started out by singing today because it's kind of a funny thing. People always say, no, Suzanne, you should sing. But honestly, I'm like, no, it's a professional setting. I really shouldn't. But more and more, as I'm developing my own voice, as I'm finding my own uh, who I am in this space, especially owning a business. I'm a life coach. I really get to play with that role, and I get to really create in any setting I want to. Ways to connect, sharing stories of you know being afraid or fearful. Uh, I'm not a cold caller. I don't enjoy, as well as I am standing up here like this, <laughs> walking into somebody's door, into an office, and walking up to, hi, I'm Suzanne, and I want to talk to you about my product. No, I'm really bad at that. I made myself walk into a Weight Watchers office because I have a product called Mobile Coach that I just developed. I'm kind of self-published in this, and I'm using it in another weight loss experience. Some of the tenements or the, the principles of it I'm using, and I thought this would be something. I'm really curious. What does Weight Watchers do for their clients that relate to other parts of their life, not just weight? There's a woman behind the counter. I walk up. She immediately like eyes me mm -hmm. and makes a couple decisions on that spot. And when I say, hi, my name is Suzanne, she stops. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so it, I felt that fear, that, that pit in my stomach, like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do now? So it was really funny because I sort of anticipated and prepared for this moment. So I was really proud of myself. I said, you know, I have a couple of questions I want to ask you. Do you have a minute? I pull this out, I set it on the counter right in front of her, I say, I've just developed this product, I'm a life coach, I work with um, another program around weight loss, and I was really curious what Weight Watchers does, because i got to tell you, I know a lot of people that have used it, and it's, like, they've had a lot of success with this. So she's still kind of looking at me, she's not touched this. Mm -hmm. And I say, so the next question, I go, so what do you think makes Weight Watchers so successful? Well, that was it. <laughs> she watches into this thing about the program, and the next thing she starts telling me about her dad who died, <laughs> like, oh, right. it just, wow. I kept my mouth shut, she kept mm -hmm. talking. I asked another question, she kept talking. By the time we were done, right, right away in the beginning she had said to me, this is a corporate thing, we can't do anything outside of corporate, we can't have anybody come in here who's right. not corporate. Go away, go away. Right. right, right away. So that's when I was like, yeah, I really, I appreciate that, I, that's so common. 
I said, but what do you think? And that's when I asked her the question, what do you think makes this program so successful? Bam. Next thing you know, she takes my flyer, she puts it down. You know, you should really call the corporate office. Really? It was so interesting how that, and I, but it was that moment, I had that moment, right, where I felt that feeling in the pit of my stomach. And I really could have said, thank you very much, could you just take a look at this and walk out the door? And she would have thrown it in the she garbage. She would have thrown away, exactly. So by just stopping for that pause and asking a question, it just transformed that conversation. At one time, I had to do a presentation for senior administrators in the courts. I <laughs> was. So I went out and bought a new suit. <laughs> I decided, sure. like, I'm going to go out and suit. Nice, like, yeah. Yes, yeah. you use whatever tools you write. If mm -hmm. buying a new suit made me feel better, well, then so what? It was worth it. every penny I paid for that suit. It actually helped, by the way, because I got up there. I There was an expectation. Everybody was in suits. So I was so glad that I mm -hmm. <laughs> had spared that expense. And, you know, I just was really, really well prepared. I just made sure that I was really clear what people wanted. And I, so I did that. I, I put together, did a lot of research, got some really good sources. I used credible facts. You know, I don't always do that, but in, my, in a case like this, know your audience ahead of time. This was an audience driven by data. They wanted some data and some facts, and it had to be relevant to their situations. So when I got there, I introduced myself, and I started with an icebreaker right away. So I stopped talking almost right away which allowed me to settle into the space. Oh, no. I was able to get grounded. And then by the time we got going again, well, then it was easy. Because once I realized that really they didn't know more than I knew, like that was my big fear. They're going to know more than I know. What are the things you do know that you do offer of value? You know what I really know about audiences at all these years? One of the things I've heard about speakers that people dislike over and over is that thing of being talked down to. Mm -hmm. People don't like it when the speaker up here assumes they are the experts and knows more than everybody else. So while there's this expectation that we build that we think people want, there's also this like, we're all adults. We're all, we all have life experience. We all have things to contribute. And I'm sure that there are people here that have tips that I might not know of and I'm actually excited to hear more of. And, and I'm gonna say, Allison, just an expectation that we know Right? Mm -hmm. Or this expert thing. Right. Really, I think that's an expectation that maybe we project because we're thinking we have to be the experts. Mm -hmm. Follow up. If people ask questions and you don't know, say, I'm not sure, we will find out and everybody will get an email. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to like find my base. And one of the things that like presidents do, anybody in a position like that, they have their circle of people who keep them sane, right? Mm -hmm. Who help them clarify that message and keep that message on target, who aren't having to feel it personally, who can kind of take some of that off of him. Find your base, find your circle, create your support. Preparing and practicing is probably the number one way <laughs> to get yourself ready for any time you're gonna have to do something you know of ahead of time. Practice in the mirror. Record yourself and watch it. Watch yourself again and again and keep recording until you feel good about the delivery. Ask other people. If you have kids, I, my kids have listened to me. So it's hilarious. I'm like, sit down, I need to practice on you. And they give me immediate feedback too, by the way. <laughs> They're good for that. I think watching yourself on video, as painful as it is, <laughs> as painful as it is, and I will be in pain later, because I'm like, geez, Suzanne, I can't believe you did that. That it's the best way to like get that immediate feedback, and you get to be you, the judge for you before somebody else points out. Geez, did you see when you did that? That didn't work. You're gonna know. I promise you, you'll know, and you'll see it immediately when you watch yourself on video. When you're passionate and excited about something, it shows through. When you're not, it shows through. So. Being passionate and excited about what you're talking about excites and enrolls people as well.